This is the Stay Healthy Experience. Your host, Robert Ferguson. That's mm-hmm. me, yours truly. And we got Barbara Chris yes. and Daniel Baldwin, who is on travel. Again. He's not here, but he sends, uh, you know, best wishes. And yep. He speaks very highly of these two gentlemen that uh, we have here because he has been over. That's right. To their mm-hmm. establishment, which is called Panero Brothers. Yes. Correct? Yes. Welcome. So, thank you for being here. Mm-hmm. Thanks thank you. for having us. So yeah. many people you know, who are wanting to live their healthiest life, indulge and enjoy wine. Right. And so yes. this is fitting. You know, I've done seminars on wine and chocolate and, chocolate, yeah. and coffee yeah, and a whole bunch of things that pack with antioxidants. Mm-hmm. And what you guys offered to the community here in Ventura, California mm-hmm. is quite unique. Attitude adjustment, we call it. Okay. I like that <laughs> because it's a different, it's a different wine. So, you know, for those of you guys who want to learn about wine, mm-hmm. who want to, and you feel like you know a lot about wine, right? you still want to listen because you're going to learn some new stuff about wine. Mm-hmm. So would you be so kind? Let's start with you, Dave, is to kind of give us like an introduction of, of who you are and what's the name of the business? Yeah. Uh, Panaro Brothers Winery, f- uh, fourth generation winemaker, uh, grand- grandfather and great grandfather. Fourth generation. I didn't know that. So my great grandfather was a vineyard manager in, in Northwest Sicily. And um, grandfather learned from him. So both grandfathers made wine and mm-hmm. they brought their equipment and knowledge to America in the 1920s. And we have a uh, hundred year old press outside uh, winery there that uh, my grandfather brought over. And it's moved from Italy to New York to uh, New York State anyway, to um, Hollywood, North Hollywood, Canoga Park, and then finally out here to Ventura. So it's moving its way north up, up the California coast. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, we started a business here uh, 12 years ago. Uh, I have three brothers, so no sisters, four brothers, and uh, mm-hmm. we decided, decided to call it Panaro Brothers Winery. And uh, this is uh, Ron Nordstrom. He's our brother from another mother, basically. <laughs> All right. We took him on as a partner. So, so you guys have we, an Indian that works with you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? Where did that come I from? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with the long ponytail, you know. Yeah. You know, I grew up, you know, watching the Lone Ranger. So every time there was an Indian on TV, they had <laughs> hair kind of like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you you, you know. usually had the stripes and the darker skin, though. Yeah, I remember right. watching. Yeah. Yeah. If we put a band around his feather. forehead, I think, you know. Yeah. yeah. The Tonto. Yeah, bow and arrow. <laughs> okay. And so, and, and you're a partner with Panero Brothers. Yeah. I'm a junior partner, and I... Uh, bought in 2015, 2016. Well, Unfortun- I, I, unfortunately, he's not part of the Nordstrom department store chain. So. Yeah, so that's why I have to do this <laughs> instead. <laughs> well, one of the things that I've always heard you say, and I love hearing you say it when I'm over at Panero Brothers uh-huh. uh, having a glass of wine, right. is that Ron will say that I'm the better half of, of the ownership of the company. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you always... I never now witnessed you know that. why like my that, customers that like me. <laughs> no, but well, I've heard I don't you... do it when he's downstairs. <laughs> No, but I've heard you say many times, you says, Robert, look, I started on that side of the bar because mm-hmm. they had the bar where they serve, you know. Yes. So right. he yeah. was a customer first. I, I tell customers yeah. all the time that I've been behind the counter for five years. I've been on the customer side for over 30. Right. Nice. And so that's how I ended up back there is I came into the winery and I thought they were doing fantastic things with Reds and mm-hmm. I met the brothers and they were really easy to get along with. And then I. You know, so I started spending more time there and it was a progression thing, but I ended up buying in. Now, when nice. people come and experience <laughs> your wine, right, what's the number one thing you hear them saying as far as the difference um, between your wines and, say, your typical California wine? Mm-hmm. Well, they, they notice a difference, but a, a lot of them don't know how to express that. And I well, try tell and us about it, Ron. Yeah. yeah. I, I try and explain to them that that they're actually experiencing a difference. Uh, that we're trying to do wines in the Italian style. That's Dave's background. Right. We're not trying to do them in the French style. Most wineries are, are a variation on a French style. Mm. So by doing it Italian style instead of French style, the reds are more fruit forward, less tanniky on the end, easier to drink without food. Nice. Oh, see, I didn't know that. And, and I'm half. I'm half Italian. That's right. See? So and that's why you need to be drinking. I, I wine. know. I know. I need to get some schooling on this. For so, sure. And how many wines do you guys currently have available? 22. What? I know. Wow. 22 different varietals or more blends, mostly mm. single grape wow. varietals. Yeah. yeah. We only have three or four blends. The rest are all single varietals. Yeah, I want to see what each grape tastes like, so I like to make some <laughs> right. grape varietals. Wow. <laughs> then when I get tired of making that same grape, I make it into something else. So we have like three different types of Syrah. I got a regular Syrah, I got a raspberry Syrah, mm-hmm. blackberry Syrah. 
things like that. Now, know? are there any other wineries in this area <laughs> that are Italian wineries? No. Um, some that claim they make Italian varietals, but I don't think uh, Italian per se, other than maybe Bocali um, up in uh, Ohio. Ohio. Yeah, but that's up in Ohio. In Ventura, my answer <clears throat> would be no. Uh, wow. I have been up to Los Olivos, and there are some wineries up there that are doing Italian style. And okay. they taste pretty close to ours, so I get it. See, I would think that people, and I'm not saying they're not running to you guys, but people who live in Ventura County right. would be looking forward to running over to Panero Brothers to experience this authentic um, way of or style of of creating a wine. Yeah, I mean, just because it's so unique and different, you don't just get it anywhere. Right. Well, and, yeah. and that that may be one of the places that we've fallen short is not putting that in our printed advertising. Okay, so what does yeah. it mean when you say Italian mm. style? A little higher acid, longer um, barrel aging. Um, higher alcohol, typically, because the mm -hmm. longer you age it, the higher the alcohol goes up. I like that. Oh. People like evaporates. that. <laughs> <laughs> like we're going. Well, <laughs> yeah, but the, the trick is that our, we've got higher alcohol, and yet it's not sharp. Hmm. In Italian, we call that forte, means strong. Forte. Or I knew forceful. that. Very good. <laughs> you knew forte? Yeah, forte. So but okay, so the style, so it's so it's the aging is different than a typical California made wine when i go wine tasting i want to taste well we call it wine research um i want to taste a lot of different flavors and yeah. that's what i'm trying to achieve and one of the best compliments i can get from a customer is hey these wines all taste different or all taste great mm -hmm. you know and uh it's better than just saying hey this is you know merlot this is zimadel this is syrah this is cabernet and they mm -hmm. all taste the same to me i'm like i feel like i'm getting gypped <laughs> it's like right yeah where's the flavor and a lot of times that's because the people don't uh, age it long enough well, I know well, my my very first experience mm -hmm. when I came and had wine and, you know, my wine experience up until coming to Panero Brothers mm -hmm. was the California blends. Mm -hmm. Right. So I remember getting like a Zinfandel. Right. And I tasted it and it didn't taste like what I was expecting a Zinfandel to taste like. We don't you know have I mean? the normal stuff. We call it different tasting. Right. It's different. Oh. I mean, it's and, different. It's and then bad. when it's I went good. to the Merlot, yeah. but then I remember talking to Ron and Ron was explaining to me the unique side of Italian made wines compared to what I was used to. Right. And then it made me appreciate Pernero Brothers more. Okay. And that's I'm why when I'm that. over there, I always like, I'm always pushing Ron. I go, Ron, when new customers come in, tell them about the uniqueness of uh, right. Italian wine compared to a California or a French wine. Because that really helped me. And yes, if I, for if sure. I know it's a new customer, I generally do. That's that's what I was talking about. Is is we we you know we may have some shortcomings in our printed ads, but when customers come in, I I share that whenever I can. Yeah, like I remember I brought over a client of mine, and I think that there was like the is it three or five questions that you ask a weight someone? loss client. Oh, it was a weight, no. yeah, it was a weight <laughs> loss. <laughs> right. I think you're talking about the three the, most important things in wine tasting. Yes. And so yes. And that's a great point that. because, OK, so obviously I'm not a, a you know, I don't drink a lot of wine. I'm I, I'm still I still need to learn a lot about wine drinking and all that. But I thought that was so helpful when you asked her that it was it was it was really great. So you should share that. Share that. Yeah, okay, everybody so at home is going. What can you tell us the three things? No. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And and so, um, yeah. People come in. First of all, I wish I could claim this, but I can't. Mm -hmm. I, I got really lucky. I, I went into a winery called Bonnie Dune, and the lady behind the counter taught me these yeah. 30 years ago. And so I've carried them with me, and it's part of the reason why I've loved wine tasting for so many years. Mm -hmm. But the, the three questions are, what's the best wine in the world? And I said, well, the one I like. Ding, and that's the correct answer. I know. See, that's what you said. I did. I got it right. Mm -hmm. Whoop. So you messed it. You messed it all up because he didn't want you to say that. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, right? he did. You can guess the right answer. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it's it's about fifty fifty. They either don't know the answer or they answer it correctly. And I, and I don't mind which way mm -hmm. because from there, if they don't guess correctly, then I give them the correct answer and we move on. But that is the correct answer because every winemaker is mm. trying to make a quality product. Right. And and. And every wine is different. And so the best wine for you is the one that you like. Okay. See? Okay. So, and then question number two is if, if you don't like it in your glass, don't cook with it. There's too many people go over to Trader mm -hmm. Joe's and they buy a bunch of wines and you don't get to taste them first. And I, I mean, yeah, I've, I've gotten lucky sometimes, but also I've gotten 
where you open it up, pour it in your glass, wrinkle your nose. Customers will, will wrinkle their nose, put the cork back in it and stick it in the fridge. I'll cook with it. That's a mistake. Whatever you didn't like in your glass is going to reduce down and ruin your food. That's so, such common sense. Mm-hmm. So if you cook with <laughs> wines you like, I promise you'll have way better luck. It, it, your food will taste better. And it's, you know, it's, it's the way it should be done. You shouldn't be cooking with wines you don't like. Right. Okay. Love and then the, the third thing is it's okay to mix wines as long as you mix with purpose. And unfortunately, you've got to come into the winery if you want to see how that works. Okay, yeah. so when you say purpose, what do you mean? Mm-hmm. I, I mix mean, with purpose. It, it has to be, uh, you have to be able to copy it at home. In other words, you know, if you throw a bunch of stuff in your glass, you know, different wines, it might taste good or it might taste bad. Mm-hmm. But even if it tastes good, you've served no purpose because unless you can copy it at home, then then what was the point? So when I say it's okay to mix wines as long as you mix with purpose, it means that I'll put a couple together, you'll be amazed, and then you can buy both bottles, take it home, and make the exact same thing. You know, the first time I witnessed or experienced uh, blending different uh, varietals Mm -hmm. of wine is when I was sitting having dinner with Jack LaLanne. You guys remember Jack mm LaLanne? Yes. So I'm, I'm with Jack and his wife, and he takes a Merlot, he orders Merlot, a glass of Merlot, and a glass of Chardonnay. Mm-hmm. And he blends them. Oh. And I was like, oh, that like, was interesting. Just like. That's kind of an Italian thing, mixing the white with the red. Oh, is that right? Really? Friends, oh, yeah. We don't do that much. So yeah. I don't even know that. I mean, geez. I mean, if, if I it was good so enough for Jack LaLanne, it's good enough for all of us. <laughs> well, like I said, mixing with purpose so you can copy it at home. But generally when I do it for customers, yeah, it's it's one white and one red that blend super well together. Right. And I'm not going to tell you what they are because I want you to come in and try it. That's right. Well, people, I mean, locals. Uh, see? I would like to see more locals at least know about you guys and experience it because every other winery is the same. I mean, they may have like a a good wine, but number one, they don't have the cheers filling. Like the thing I like, I mean, the wine is great, but one of the things I like about you guys, you're so welcoming. Yes. And the conversations are great. The customers are great. Yeah. And it feels like I'm just going over some friend's house and everybody's coming over and we're just laughing and having a good time. Oh, I know. That's, that's my rule. You got to have drink with friends. Don't drink too much. Have a good time, learn something, and that's why we're there to help help you learn yeah. things. You know, there's over a thousand different varietals of grapes that make wine. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't and, know that. You know, Ron's, like, Ron's talking about cooking wine. A lot of people don't know cooking wine has salt in it, so you don't want to drink that kind of stuff. Mm. And I wouldn't buy a cooking wine because really. So if it says cooking wine, yeah, you can you can buy wine, that on a separate aisle. Oh, you okay. still have to be 21 to buy it because it does have some alcohol on it. Wow, but I it's had no made idea. Specifically for cooking, and it's it's not a good idea. I, I would much rather cook with a wine I like. Hmm. Why why add salt? You can add salt to taste and, and have a better wine in your food. Maybe right. it's, it's um, um, my gut is telling me that it's cheaper. Yeah. Right? Then it is. It's just a bottle of wine. It's a very poor quality wine that they yeah, use. Yeah, because if, if I go spend 20 bucks on a nice looking bottle of wine, <laughs> then yeah. I don't know if I want to stir fry some mushrooms. Right, in it. you don't want to boil it away, <laughs> <laughs> fry it away. Well, you, you have to remember that it. If it's a good wine, it doesn't take a lot of wine to alter the flavor. So let's say you're making spaghetti for yourself and a guest. Mm -hmm. A bottle of wine holds four glasses. So you take one glass and dump it in your spaghetti. I promise it's going to make it taste wonderful. And you've still got three more glasses that you can have for yourself and share with your friends. Now, because you are (laughs) heating up the wine and most of it will evaporate, um, could you have a kid? consume that spaghetti that has some wine that's, poured into yes. it? That's actually how you make non-alcoholic wine. You boil off the alcohol. Okay. But yeah, I don't make spaghetti sauce without putting a little wine in there. Oh, nice. Mm. Now, is it like a wine? splash? Yeah, yeah like what kind it? of wine do you put um, in it? Well, mostly the heavier reds because, uh-huh. uh, you know, oh, spaghetti yeah. sauce is high acid, um, tomatoes. Uh, so a Pinot Noir or something light like that wouldn't do it too well, but anything from a Merlot all the way up, you know, mm. Zimandel, Syrahs, uh, Petit Verdots, things like that that are Heavier reds, hmm. carignanos, whatever. So you are trying to yeah. alter the flavor a little bit. Yeah. So if you use a white, it's way too light. It's, it's, so it's like it adding even, water because you're yeah, it's not going to alter lost. the flavor right. enough to make a difference. I'll have to try that. Now if, I make spaghetti. If, <coughs> if oh, someone is <laughs> if, if if someone is new to wine, mm-hmm. um, what are some of the things that you would recommend they become knowledgeable of? Yes, that's like for me right here. <laughs> I, I, yeah. So first of all, I I love to tease him. Uh, I call them wine virgins. 
<laughs> and then, <laughs> and then second of all, it's it's the three that we went over. That's, right. That's the fir- if they've never been wine tasting before, that's the first thing I give them because if they remember that, they're going to enjoy wine tasting for the rest of their lives. You know, and I I have gone wine tasting one time. I was in Sonoma Valley, and my son was. I remember he was not quite one yet, and uh, we went wine tasting, and it was great. But I remember that because uh, you know I don't drink a lot. I remember uh, we just got to the first vineyard or winery and that was like it i had to sit there for a while and and, then like like let the alcohol just wear off because it just even those (laughs) little bit of tasting i mean i remember it was so funny because we're at this bar and i remember my dad was at the far end i I remember like looking over at him and it just he kind of moved a little bit i was like oh geez like we got to stop here we got to like maintain but See, I need See, to folks, I need to work up into this. So not not just beautiful, cheap date. <laughs> so we, <laughs> it so take we, a lot of alcohol. <laughs> so when someone comes into your winery, knowing that that could happen to mm-hmm. a lot of people who don't drink much, mm-hmm. do you recommend they eat before they come? Like, yes, definitely eat. Have a full stomach. Okay. And while you're tasting, have water in between each taste. Standard mm-hmm. standard pour is one ounce. The standard glass of wine is six ounces. So. You don't want to get too drunk. You, you're there Six to ounces. learn, have, 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 have fun that's, time. That's standard. <laughs> Which kind of brings me to these glasses here. Why mm-hmm. is there a difference in glasses? Oh, yeah. You can have the same wine in different glasses, and it can taste different because it, the weight of the glass, the, the shape of the rim, this is called a roll rim, this is called a cut rim, cut rim. So uh, stemless glass, this is more of a dessert glass uh, mm. for the heavier, thicker wines like a port or you know something like that. Um, this is normally a water glass, but I'm just bringing it for example. Much oh. heavier. So all these... Um, differences give you different input into your brain, so that gives you a different uh, result. Your brain translates that into a different flavor or taste. Oh, nice. So it's kind of interesting to see what. So the proper glass really does make a difference. Oh. Um, the reason most wine glasses are tapered up to a smaller opening is because you want to catch all the volatiles in there, the alcohol and the smells. To keep it. So it'll, it'll capture them and kind of direct them back or towards your nose. Right. As opposed to a straight-sided glass like a water glass like this ah. where it would just you know, come right out. So you don't want too big of a bowl. You don't want too small of a bowl unless you're you know, tasting a wine. Like this, the reason this works for uh, uh, ports and things that are heavier like uh, aperitif-type wines is they usually have a lot more alcohol in them and they're higher volatiles. So you don't have to worry about letting too much of it escape or anything. And you don't want to drink a lot of it too, a little half right, ounce more port. Sipping. Like well, Just a sipping kind well, of let's go back. Let's go to kindergarten here because I heard you say something <laughs> that got my attention. Okay. And there's already been a lot shared already and there's, whole, I, there's a whole bunch coming because mm-hmm. uh, these guys are quite knowledgeable. <laughs> you said depending on the shape and the, and the size of the glass, it will impact the flavor that you get when you drink the definitely, wine. definitely, yeah, absolutely, yeah. We we sometimes let people do what we call the the taste challenge or the glass challenge, and we'll give the same wine in three different glasses. Really, and if you mm-hmm. go one direction or the other, it doesn't matter. Then we then we ask the, them which the, one tastes. The better. fact that you're this is called the handshake. See, and that's kiss. fun to me. Huh. You know, yeah, I mean, if you go to your typical winery, they're not doing that. No, no, no I know. They don't not want to dirty all. up glasses. They're not blending in front of you. Right, or anything. We right. do all kinds of weird stuff. Just well, you're supposed we're, to. We're trying to have fun. Have fun and learn. It is fun. That's why people come out. It's entertainment. I thought I was in the wine business. I realized I'm in the entertainment right. business. <laughs> so when you pick up a glass like this, that's called the handshake. When you touch it to your lips, that's called the kiss. So the handshake and the kiss in the marketing business is how do I get them to go through that I've process. never heard that before. I haven't either. I've been drinking wine for a, quite a while. What if you lick the glass? Just you can kidding. Do whatever you <laughs> <laughs> Any kind of tactile stimulation of your lips and tongue is up to you. All right, so the handshake. Then we're trying to go home. So this is the handshake <laughs> if I pick it up. The handshake. Right. How you pick it up is a difference, too. Do you okay. grab the stem? Do you cup it? Okay. Well, yes. Yeah, so I grab, have heard that you, too. Like you're yeah, not you guys supposed grab to. The, have already, the bowl? You, you've all uh, grabbed the glass correctly. Okay. The I grabbed re- it correctly? I got yes. that little thing. No, no, yeah, pinky the, sticks the, out. What I mean is that the, the whole See reason that? that these have stems <laughs> is, is so that you don't warm up the wine. Okay, so, so I did... This, that's why you grab a burgundy glass this way, oh, see. is so that you warm up the burgundy, because that's a different so animal. Like, you see, want to do that. Got the thumb up. That's like you sophisticated. But, but, <laughs> but, but with wine, that. so you I don't want to heat it up. Like a Frenchman there. Okay, so some, for some reason, I did know that random bit of trivia that you're not supposed to touch this part of the glass. It's because it heats up the wine. Correct. And there's a lot of, okay, so I'm seeing some integration going on here. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing about some French terminology. Is that accurate? With the Italian way of making it, mm-hmm. blend it with some California lingo also. Yeah, throw a little white in there. That's an Italian thing. Okay. 
So no. this is multi. This is multi. Um, Multicultural. All right. Yeah. I like it. United Nations. You can. Well, the okay. Best of all worlds. The reason I brought all these little props or tools <coughs> yeah, is so you can see what they are. So this is a one ounce pour, normally um, designated by a red top. Um, oh, so that's how you know exactly so, how much to pour. Yeah. A lot yeah. of people don't yeah. know that you'll pour notice spouts are color coded. It's red down here. So. These are red on the top, but a red is always one full ounce. Mm -hmm. You, you oh, can wow. find them in yellow, blue, green, but those are different amounts. So some like, are, some are more half, than an ounce, some are less than an ounce. Right, so yeah. it's not guesswork. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the bartender can know what he's pouring. So uh, I didn't know that. Ordering a double shot of whiskey or something or vodka he's, in a bar. He, then he's going to do two If he's got a red two, nozzle on there, pours. he better pour it twice. <laughs> right. <laughs> so so nowadays, someone's lot, had a really hard day. use those guns, it kind of throws you off. So which nozzle do you use when someone's had a really hard day? So all of our, Double our shot. nozzles uh, are, no are nozzle. one ounce. You just <laughs> right. Is that what the one you get? Twice. Yeah, that's the he one. He gets I no get. nozzle. He just gets the open bottle uh -huh. like that. He this does. Is, this is a great oh, invention see? too because this has two ball bearings in it and it stops the, the length of the tube determines the, the amount of wine you're going to get. So the longer one would be for like two ounce, and when you pour it, the the back ball bearing stops the wine from coming in and then. Whatever's in the tube pours right. out. So you can't shake it. The, yeah, the other ball stops <laughs> Just it. Just so. kidding. Well, anyway. Okay, so what people I want people to also know is that you see the excitement that Dave just had. I know. When he started talking about the little gadgets right? and all that. He got this. That's because he's a sci he's a scientist. I wish I, 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 wish I would have invented this thing, you know, man. Make fifty cents a piece or something. Yeah. Like so so let's talk <laughs> about that for a second. So here it is, you work, you know, as a scientist for the government for all these years. I used to. You're retired. Now. Hydrologist, yeah. Okay, so yeah. geology, hydrology. How did you go from that? To being an owner of a winery, I mean, I know that we. I mean, you said you had your family history, right? That's. But still, did you wake up one morning after working local. for thirty years or twenty five years and go, you know what, brothers? Hey, you guys, get on the phone. <laughs> Let's. I got an idea. Let's re. You should ignite. go ahead and tell yeah. them the story. You yeah, know what I mean? Let's this. reignite the family business. I, well, I got Shanghai. Call Vino. I got Shanghai by my grandfather's when I was like seven. <laughs> We all did. Vino, so. Vito. Yeah, yeah, but that, Vito. Tony, Vito. Tony, Vito. Tony's are the cousins and the that, uncles. That and the is how you nephews. gained your winemaking experience was from your, your grandfather and your family. But what Robert wants to know is how did you and your brothers decide to go ahead and try and make a go of it? And yeah. I've heard this story, and I think he should tell it again. Yeah, nice. we should hear this. After let's my hear father this. passed away, I told my brothers, I said, let's jump in my van, leave the wives and kids home. Let's all, you know, connect again. We haven't, you know, gotten together a lot. Um, so let's just go on a wine tasting tour. So we started in Santa Barbara, worked our way north to Paso Robles, and you know you're doing six, seven, eight wineries a day. <laughs> you know, wow. by the third or fourth day, you know we're coming out of the seventh winery, and we're like, eh, we can do this. We got half the equipment <laughs> at home. <laughs> so yeah, don't go into business based on a drunken binge tour. You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but yeah, we we went to commercial about twelve years ago, and uh, before it was just all making jug wines at home in the garage for fun and sharing with friends, and Aww. you know, so. And you said that you have the your press is from Italy. The, My your, grandfather's well, old press. The one, is out the one out the front, store, yeah. uh -huh. th that's out there for advertising. That is actually the family it's, press. It's a garden ornament it's, now because yeah, it's too it's, small. It's, it's, yeah, we had to purposes. buy a bigger one for the right. winery. But it's called a basket press. Right. It's a typical. And do you sometimes do you the 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 actual stepping on it? No, not unless there's a good-looking girl that comes in and asks. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, we just, have pressure so you know. stemmers and presses yeah. for that. Yeah. It, it oh. is it is still legal to do that. Yeah, you, you clean your feet a certain way, and it's still legal to do. Right. But we have a crusher to stemmer. So right. It, it, yeah, our wines haven't been done now that way. Now, you guys have done it, just, right? Since uh, that was before I came on board, but there are pictures of his nieces doing it well, that way. I've never done it myself. Yeah. They my grandfathers wouldn't let me get in there like that. So. Is that <laughs> because you have fungus on your feet? Or? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Robert, be nice. I know. Um, That's right. I'm going to pour another one. There you go. Exactly an well, ounce. Because didn't you invite me to do that one time? The reason we don't do yes. it is normally. No, that was just to get you over there. <laughs> and normally, you pick up the phone. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, by the time the grapes get here, you know, we it's late at night or we're working until 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning or something trying to crush everything. And it's just, you know, it's just bad timing. You don't it's know like, where's that BK when we need her to step on those damn well, grapes? See, right. But see, this is a prime example of why we have this epidemic with obesity. <laughs> is because everyone's oh, not taking exercise. shortcuts. Too right. I mean, think about it. Too much equipment doing that. Right. Right. You bet. Like, no, I agree with not that. Not enough one. hand labor. You, you didn't know what in labor in this. You didn't know where I was going, did you? I had no idea. It's like because we're taking shortcuts on all industries. It's true. So it used to be like a woman could come in there or a man and they would step on those grapes. Hell yeah. 20,000 steps. That's right. And now you guys took that away from us. 
Sorry, the old methods are still available, but it's a lot slower. Right, you got to bring it back. And it's all about time, right? When it comes to wine, yeah, you yes, got you got a certain time. You got to get things crushed. You got to get the yeast in there so it can start fermenting. You know, now which it's wine? It's like concrete mm. and waits for no man. It's going to dry whether you stand okay. there and do it or not. You're right. Mm. So, so explain to us the difference in the process between a white wine and a red wine. Like is you know like do they you you take the grape off so that's the same. Send right. it through the crusher to stimmer. You, you, the next step is you send it through the crusher thing. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then what? So are they exactly the same all the way to the bottle? No. No. All right. Well, pull, go ahead. Walk you, us through it. Because you got to pull the skins off a of white wine, otherwise it will turn pink. Mm-hmm. Okay. So no, I mean a lot of people didn't know that. Right. All right. So you, you take the skin off the white. Yes. For the the grapes for white wine. Yeah, I used to say all grape juice is white. What makes a red wine is the skins. You leach out the antioxidants, the tannins, the color. Uh, I have learned recently, though, like the Alicante Boucher, that that if you, if you take away the skins, that's actually a, a red pulp. Is that which, a grape? Yes. Okay. Alicante Boucher is a grape. So, mm-hmm. so there are a few out there that are darker in color, but they're rare. Most grape juice is white unless you color it. Okay. This is why I'm the winemaker. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> what, this is what you told me. <laughs> He's only watched me make red wine. Um, the red wine, you take, you, you go, both go through red wine and white, go through the crusher de stemmer. Yeah. But in the case of the white wine, you go straight to the press. And you have to press it out first, and then you put the fermentation in the juice only. So but that's how you get the skins, skins off. So that's I was right. You, skins and stems and seeds all get okay. taken out. Okay. It's just the juice okay. that's fermenting. With the red wine, you throw the, the yeast in the, the mash, as they call it, and um, it's, it, it ferments through there. And then after it's done fermenting, then you press it out. Okay. So it's a timing so, issue with, with the thing. And if you want to make an orange wine, a lot of people don't know what, what that orange? is. You have four different oh. kinds of wine. Uh, you have your white, red, rosé, and orange. Now, an orange wine is the I opposite. I have never heard that. Orange it, wine is an opposite. Very, of, it's a way of making wine. Make it's the opposite wine. of a rosé. A rosé, you tape, typically take a Pinot Noir or a Zimmendel. You crush the grapes, you take the juice off the skins real quick, like you would do with a white. Mm-hmm. You separate it out, so it doesn't pick up a lot of color. Um, an orange wine is the opposite of that. It's, it's a, a white grape, but you leave the skins on longer. So you would process it like a red wine. So instead of going straight orange. to the press after the crusher, you Orange is color, not flavor. Right. So it just it gets, it gets. Do you yeah. have an orange wine? Yeah, we well, do. Well, Sauvignon Blanc, right for example, is a mm-hmm. green grape. So it makes kind of a brown, dirty color. Mm-hmm. So you don't really want to do that. So orange wines are usually made from Pinot Grigio, which is sort of a yellowish grape. Mm-hmm. And that gives you more of an orangey color. Okay, so for clarity, you're telling me that when I when I say Zinfandel, mm-hmm. there is a grape mm-hmm. called so Zinfandel that's, grape. Yes, that's the varietal, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so when, when I say Merlot. That's a different grape. You're telling me there that's a grape. Mm-hmm. That is, is it's grown like, on the vine, like and they're roses, called Merlot you know. grapes. Right, different yes, different kinds type. of roses. And you're saying there's over a thousand types of grapes. Yes, that's what he says. So you, you're pointing that way, why you don't? Well, you, because I know there's, <laughs> I know there's hundreds, but I don't know about. I'm thousands. the scientist. I do all the reading. Yeah. <laughs> right. So then I would imagine the way it's grown, the soil, all that. Oh, the that all makes a huge all difference goes on into it too. The okay. Flavor so and, and that's back to your that. question. You said, "Why am I? I'm an earth scientist. So when I go out and look at the grapes, yes. I want to know what what kind of soil okay, they're so, growing so, in. What's, but, what's the slope angle? What's the sun? You know, that's, what, uh, what on, uh, that's, you know, my, that's okay. my world. What's, well, the, I mean, conditions, that's a, but, what's the conditions for growing? <laughs> but all of that yeah. is a setup. I, I'm going somewhere with it. Uh-oh. Okay. Right. Okay. So we know that those grapes, Merlot grapes, Infidel grape, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, Syrah, 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 Syrah grape, yeah, right? Cabernet. So you got all these different grapes. Uh-huh. So when I go to Vons or Kroger or Walmart in the grocery aisle Good or Target yeah. and I see those grapes, mm-hmm. what kind of grape is that? Is that am I buying Merlot grapes? Am yep. I buying... If it PG, says uh, if it says the grape on the label, I've never seen that. Okay, well, does no, it no, say it on it? That's yes. why I don't buy French wines. They don't tell you what's in them. It just says Bordeaux, which is a blend, or Burgundy. It's a blend. I don't know what's in there. Oh, or, okay. Or like yeah, we got to come back to that. It's going to be more than fifty percent Merlot, but I don't if, know what else. Is if, in and oh. if you buy Menage a Trois, that's a blend. So they no, they don't tell you what's in it. You've got to look at the label. Oh, but because it, Menage a Trois or like those Bordeaux, those aren't a grape. We're not. Yeah, so we're blends. Not, blends. We're, we're not oh, talking okay. about the maker's name. The, the company could be called Menage a Trois, but they make a Burgundy or they make a you know a Bordeaux okay. or something like that. That's a blend. That's a blend of grapes. When you hear the, Correct. the term GSM, that means Grenache, Syrah, Morvedre. Those are the three grapes okay. that are in a GSM wine. So that's wow. kind of a French blend. A, Tus- so, a Tuscan wine is, a, is an Italian blend. 
Got so. it. If, if you go into the store and you see, you know, X winery and underneath you see Cabernet Sauvignon, if that was made in California, it's going to be at least 71% that great. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. So, is that, you well, get that, Barbara? Well, Does that make sense? As so, far as how you had a murder, seventy-five percent. So, you so, you so, so you're, before, you're allowed you're allowed to put up to fifteen percent by federal law of a different grape in there, and, and don't still have to call and still it. You don't call have to put that, that on the label. Okay. Yeah, it's just the still, majority is yeah. it's seventy-five that percent or more, but yeah. it has to be the majority. Otherwise, can you ever get a hundred percent? Oh yeah, yeah our yeah, wines are hundred percent. So it's like called single grape varietal. Okay, are there other wineries around here that? Yeah, a lot of people do that. They sell a Merlot, but they're not a hundred percent. Well, we don't know. They could have five or ten percent of something else. So it's their their secret. It's their secret. Not required to tell you. It's a secret. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things like I I follow the laws around and regulation around labels that touch on nutrition. And when you get the alcohol, you notice you don't have they don't have the calories Mm -hmm. on a bottle of wine and you don't see them with the calories. It's not mandatory on uh, if you buy beer. But if you were to get low calorie beer. Mm-hmm. The calories and nutritional facts are on there. Oh, they have to put them on. Okay, exactly. When it's like a low calorie, when they're but, claiming it. Well, I'm not sure. I mean, that's that's. I'm just sharing with you the legalities About. of labeling. Okay. Right. Right. So when it comes to wine, and we live in a world that's weight conscious. Think yeah. about it. Everybody's looking at nutritional facts all the time, mm-hmm. but no one's going. Oh man, let me look at the nutritional facts before I buy this bottle of wine. No, they want to oh, know right. about flavor. Or they want to know yeah. the percentage of alcohol. That's what I look at. Like how strong it is. <laughs> All right, <good>. 14%. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give that one. That's 15%. Yeah. The sweet spot is 12 to 12.5% 12 12 alcohol, by the way. Okay. That's, that's what most people want to see on a wine. But it is interesting because, uh-huh. you know, another f- interesting part of wine is that people walk in assuming that wine is high in sugar. Well, you have to, if it's a dessert wine or what they call a late harvest wine, you have to put the sugar content. They'll, they'll right. list it as residual because, sugar or yes. RS. That's required by but law. But I'm talking about like this bottle right here, your typical Merlot, your typical yeah. Zinfandel. Zinfandel. No reason to put any kind of labeling on right. there mm. other than where you bought it and what varietal it is and what year it is. In other mm. words, where I bought the grapes. So I have to put, you know, this Paso Robles AVA or Agricultural Viticultural Area, which are federally designated growing areas for there at the wine grapes. Right. What do you sell? Mm-hmm. But, but let's, I want to talk about the sugar side of it. I've watched people <clears throat> and listened to people come into your winery and others go, yeah, I'm not really drinking wine right now because there's too much sugar. Mm-hmm. I'm not really drinking wine because it's got too much sugar in it. Unless it's a sweet wine, you probably won't have much sugar in it. Right. So, let's yeah. just, so uh, forget about sweet wines and dessert wines and plum wines and all that. Let's right. just talk about the average typical wine. People will walk in assuming they won't drink that wine because they assume it has a lot of sugar in it. Right. But if they assume that, then it's our job to educate them. Okay, so educate is because, because there's a difference between a dry wine. So talk about the difference of wine as it pertains to sugar. All, all grape juice has sugar in it. But that's how we make wine. We put the yeast in there. The yeast, the yeast eats the sugar and makes alcohol. Okay. That's the byproduct. And so if you let the yeast go until it's almost dead, then it will eat up all the sugar and you have a dry wine. The residual sugar is going to be basically zero. Mm. Okay, so okay. dry wine dry. means there's no sugar. No residual sugar. This is why I changed the back label. So I, I like to see charts and graphs, right? So, right. Uh, okay, so are you guys telling me, I'm trying, I'm, I'm, I'm teeing up an opportunity for you to hit a home run here. Mm-hmm. And the home run is about sugar and wine. I've had many clients come to me and go, no, nah, it's got too much sugar. I go, look. If you had a five ounce glass of, of average Merlot, right? It has like three grams. Less, if it's a dry wine. Okay, not even, I'm not even talking like, like uh, zero, to, zero to one percent. Right. There's like no sugar. Right. Right. So why are people thinking that wine is packed with sugar? Because well, that, that would be the dry category over here. No, but why yeah, are but the, people? You get like why do they one think or 2%, that? percent, you can probably call medium dry. Yeah, but you guys are still not here. No one's well, here. No, no, no. Can you help me out here? Then you have medium sweet and sweet. I am, I am hearing you. Okay. And here, <laughs> here is the problem, okay? Most of the people who make the complaint that you're talking about are diabetics, okay? If you're not diabetic, most people don't care about the sugar as long as the wine tastes good. The ones who do care about the sugar, they have a legitimate complaint because the reverse, the yeast turns the sugar into alcohol. Right. Okay. And wine is proof that God loves us because our bodies turn the alcohol back into sugar. 
So they can drink a dry wine. It is still going to push their sugar level up a little. It's all about the carbs, not the sugar. Well, I mean, it's going to trigger effect because mm-hmm. alcohol is toxic. That's going to play a role in house. how everything else is metabolized in the body. Right. Correct. But for instance, when I was when I was teeing up is that if this says zero sugar. Yes. Wine. You know how many more people would buy that? Even though it's already that way. Right. It's like if I go to Coffee Bean and they, they'll say gluten free iced tea. Well, no all shit. Tea, all tea is gluten free. <laughs> like, yes, don't miss the Unless here's you're through wheat, right. German. No, but I here's mean, the yeah. market. I, people are, companies are doing that. It's all, we already know that's the way it is. Yeah. But they're putting it on the label to get people to buy it. First of because all, because that's what people want. Well, now you're getting into labeling laws and federal. Yeah. Well, no, I'm just saying, like, I got the, the, the wine industry on forms. a whole has not done that. No. And part of the reason is because we don't want to give people the wrong impression. A dry wine has zero residual sugar. That's true. But your body's going to turn that alcohol back into sugar. You still got to be careful if you're a diabetic. Well, it depends on what you're eating at right. the same time and the last time you did eat. I mean, so there's a whole bunch well, that you yeah, got to look at when it's a diabetic. So yeah. Because I have my diabetics drinking wine. I show them how to enjoy yeah. wine. One glass a day is fine. And still lose weight and, and optimize. Yeah, as, lo- as long as you're not overdoing it, it's, you're not going to hurt anything. But. Okay, so people who yeah. are watching and listening to this show, <laughs> I just want you to know, don't be concerned with the carb count of wine. It's not a big deal. Now, if you're going to drink the whole bottle right. on an empty stomach you're be and you haven't eaten in five hours, <laughs> right. you're probably going to have some problems. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Even I wouldn't. I'm not diabetic. More yeah. than just yeah. worrying about carbs or sugar, really. Right. But I wouldn't avoid yes. wine because you think it's high in sugar. Correct. Right. Carbs, because it's not. You know, wine is great. I mean, I've had many clients lose a ton of weight. And still and drinking still. wine regularly. Right. And bodybuilders, which, you know, this lady right here has stepped on the stage. Oftentimes, before they walk on the stage to show their physique, they drink a little bit of wine. It helps the, the veins pop out. Interesting. They look leaner. They look stronger. And it gives them a little bit of energy because a lot of those guys haven't eaten in a while. And women, and sometimes they'll go out and pose and faint because they're over, they overexert themselves. <laughs> you know, so they'll drink a little bit of wine. And then go out there and just look amazing. So wine is your friend. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you look flush too, so you look healthier. Yeah. That's right. And for the biblical people, what I love about wine is that Jesus' first miracle was turning water into wine. Yep. Right. That's also a demonstration of how we know he was black. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't cost right? me anything to get that wine. <laughs> right. And if you're feeling a little shy, it's like personality in a glass, oh, right? Oh, yeah, that's See? right. It'll lift you right on that's up. That's right. That's it's like a lot of people don't know Noah, the guy that built the ark. He, yes. He was a winemaker. Yes, he was. Ah. So he was a vintner before he built the ark, yeah. So yeah. wine is fine. Learning. Yes. It's been <laughs> Learning around all for, kinds for of stuff thousands today. of years. For thousands of Here years. And it's, it's mind-blowing to me that more people don't enjoy wine. Some people just avoid alcohol altogether. You know, when and a glass be, of wine, I kind of look at it as food. It can be fun, you know. Yeah. You know, I don't look at it as like getting buzz and, you know what I mean? Like You don't? No, that's good. <laughs> I, I mean, seriously, I look at wine you as like you want I, to, but that's not the. Part. I see it as part of the food yeah. right. experience, yeah. for sure. I mean, definitely, yeah. especially you know, like Italian. Like that's how I grew up. Too. Even though, I, like I said, I don't drink a ton of it, but that's how I grew up with it. It's just part of the meal. It's twelve to fifteen percent yeah. alcohol. If you want wow. to get drunk? There's cheap whiskey out there. Yeah, this this is about flavor. Mm-hmm. Now, what is it like being Italian, growing up in a family where they have a lot of those traditions in place? At 12, does dad pour you a little bit of wine? When does that happen? Six or seven, whenever yeah. you want it. Is that right? Little yeah. kids. Oh, and yeah. you saw that when you went to Italy? Oh, totally. Mm-hmm. But it's just like, Different it's a culture. little bit. It's just a little bit. And little taste is what they want to get you exposed mm-hmm. to. So it, it's not verboten. It's not forbidden. Right. You know, you just think, They're hey, not, it's just another, like f- one of many liquids I've tried in my life. Right. You know, I might like lemonade more than coffee or something. But yeah, yeah, I mean, I wasn't like eight years old walking around the full glass like this, yeah. you know? I, you know but. I wonder what what mm. it's like as far as al- like like how many people become alcoholics in some a place like Italy oh when, right when you're exposed to alcohol from early questions. age compared to in America it's like What's, everyone everything is it's regulated yeah. you know what I mean I wonder if they even have the word wino in Italian I don't know mm. <laughs> yeah, you never really very... hear about a drunk Italian well, they're well not, you they're do but they're, they're generally <laughs> in America <Yeah. laughs> I'm like well <laughs> yeah it's yeah. a funny condition. 
It is fine. It's, it's so it's so like like. Do you ever drink it for like breakfast? No. So it's always part of like a, like a meal. I, well. That's just my personal preference. I don't yeah. like mulled wine, which is warm wine. You know, if you want to warm it up for. Christmas time and mm. Christmas I just don't like time. The taste of warm wine. Uh, well, because oh, mold yeah. wine, you take you take mold your wine. M U L M U L L mold M U L L, not M O L D. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so what you do is you put it in your crock pot. You you take your bottle of red wine, mm-hmm. you dump it in the crock pot, and then you fill it up again with water, and you put that in the crock pot, and then you put one cup of brown sugar, I was gonna say and you put your mulling stuff. spices, uh-huh. and you let that steep. And and you put the lid on it so you're not losing a lot of alcohol, mm-hmm. but it warms it up and it's it is good. Wonderful. Spices are what? It's a, a holiday, a holiday. Or uh, I don't know. I I cheat. I buy the pre-made stuff. I think my da- my dad's know. my dad's made that. It's See, good. you learn so like so it's wonderful though. So yeah. I wanted to Christmas share with time. people who yes. are learning about Panero Brothers for the first time, mm-hmm. is that when you go there, mm-hmm. you will see one, if not both, of these gentlemen. Yes which you don't always get that experience. A lot of these wineries get to a place where they're bigger than that. Well, that's and the yeah, you don't You see the employees yes. and the owners aren't there. Somebody and, behind yeah, the counter do that. that just you guys give us pour. hugs. They don't, they don't know anything about the background, <laughs> what the varietals are, how it's made. Yeah, that, that's kind of a problem. Mm-hmm. And you guys you're provide gonna, that solution. So yeah, when people come there, it's not just the wine, it's, it's the experience. Yes. So you guys yes. bring an experience that Ventura could be extremely proud of. We want you I to learn. So. Yeah. Yeah. The, the more knowledgeable you are, the better shopper you're going to be. So, yes. so let me let me share something with you, Ron, <clears throat> that I saw the other day. Sure. So I walked into the Panero Brothers Winery, mm-hmm. and I walked in. There was this man and woman sitting at the bar, and Dave was taking care of them. Mm-hmm. And the joy on their face, and this guy was lit up. He was explaining stuff, and they were laughing, and they were talking. The guy was getting another two bottles of wine, and he went on and on. That you remember what guy I'm talking about? I, I, he helps, went helps on and on bit, <laughs> about how amazing the experience was. Oh, like he didn't know me. This was a guy they drove from L.A. Oh, they really? just happened to be in Ventura. They went to other wineries, but they went to you guys, and oh, Dave wow. had them feel like, oh my! I mean, that guy left going, this place, this was the best experience in my. He said in my life. And that was because of the that knowledge was after he was seven getting. Seven or eight drinks, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. no, no, no. Seven or eight one ounce pours. He didn't mean full glasses. That's right. I gave him a couple but, extras, you know. But is that experience? Yeah. Yeah, and I've I've heard that from customers too. We love giving customers that experience. Yeah. We love making it something special. So that means that you're it not is. a moody wine maker. Oh no. <laughs> you're not moody. <laughs> you don't see me when I'm in the warehouse. <laughs> We he gets will. moody with me, not uh-huh. with the customer. Trying to get that, <laughs> just, trying know, to get that forklift to start. Yeah, that drives me crazy. We know <laughs> the, the only thing that. I would say that's even better than when one of you is there is when both of you are there. Yeah. You know, which is... It's, that it's can like, be you guys are funny. Yeah, it's quite funny. You guys are funny. Especially if you bring up politics. Oh, no. don't do that. Yeah, no, and no. you do. And you <laughs> always show, do. Okay? You want to know politics? You got to come in for that. Too. Let's, <laughs> talk, right. let's talk about the tools. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about those. Yeah. So this was invented back in the 1800s. This is what they call a butterfly corkscrew. I like literally this in the 1800s. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I like this because it's more engineering. It's, you know, it got pressure on both sides as opposed to what I call the finger pincher. Which is like a jackknife. Oh, type. I this, love that one. This though. is also That's invented that back in the, you know, it reminds various, me of various uh, Cub Scouts or Boy Scouts. Yeah, corkscrew, yeah. but basically, you know, and then what you do is you screw this in, and then you you pick it up, and this Pop is like the... two stage hook on the edge of the bottle, and then you pull it up like that, then you uh-huh. pull it up again, and then you got the cork out. Yeah, I think we all kind of get yeah. that. You if you that. Pinch, <laughs> yeah, still, you yeah, got, you I'm going to pinch your fingers. Yeah, I think we get that. Too dangerous. This is called a foil cutter. Normally you put this on top and then you right. spin it around. It's the got thing little, ra- little razor blades in there, whatever to cut. The Sometimes those come with like we a just, little we just blade grab it too. And pull it off. So the, this it's easier that way. <laughs> just yeah, this one does have the the blades in it. Yeah. Just, yeah, but people aren't coming to your winery to play with those kind of well, toys. For, for home use though you know this is this he's is giving what, people just, more just, yeah he's trying to give this people is just a pour spout for, it's a, for it's if a they see tubes. the show then they'll learn a little bit because this is one of the few things we don't cover in the winery if people ask questions we'd be glad to answer them mm-hmm. we'll answer any question you've got about wine and if we don't know the answer we'll go on the internet and find out mm-hmm. but you know, this is generally the kind of stuff that people you know enjoy learning about without coming into the winery to help you at home though you don't want oxygen is the enemy of wine so you don't want just a plain old open <clears throat> pour spout that's going to let air into your wine this one's kind of different it's got a little bit of a, a cap on here that it seals it off so that's just a little handle there to, okay but it's got a cap on it you know so that, that's right. nice but it's still not sealed well um, i have three questions mm-hmm. you know before we uh, end our amazing time with you guys mm-hmm. which 
I'm 100% uh, just thankful that you guys made time to come in. Well, thank you. Uh, Thanks for having us. I just want to encourage you. people to, to come visit you guys and to let for us sure. know about it. Um, but I have three questions. Mm-hmm. So think about what questions that you, you have. Okay. Uh, so my first question is, so I, I have my wine. Is this the challenge? I, I pour <laughs> it, right? And then I've watched people do this where they circle it and they spin it. Mm-hmm. And it looks like really cool when they're doing this. Mm-hmm. So I just want to know why they spin it like that. Because I've just been doing it because I thought it looked cool. They're, they're trying to, <laughs> if you're doing it properly, you're, you're trying to oxygenate, oxygenate the wine. And so if you've got a fresh bottle, if you've seen the, the person behind the counter just open a brand new bottle, then, then you're going to want to do that to put air into the wine. To make it taste like the the bottle's been open a little bit longer, and to get the full flavor and and to get it to open up. Okay, so but, when I, when a person does that, they're not just looking cool. Well, no, you've got to watch they're literally the, the person who's serving the wine. Yeah. Okay, if if they've opened a fresh bottle, then it's a good idea to do so that you know what it's going to taste like after it's been open for a while. But if it's been open on on our counter for let's say four or five hours, mm-hmm. then you're you're not going to impart much to the wine. You, you know you can do that and look cool, but it's not going to change a lot. Okay. You don't really want to get oxygen in there, but you do want to break it up so to get the volatiles you out. You don't want to get oxygen in it. No. But you do. Yeah. Just, well, you are but by agitating it. So and that's what a de- that's that's what happens in a decanter. It's exposed, right? Oh, yeah. So, so it's scientists, just scientists, it around. Let's yeah. see two scientists go at it. That's right. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. She got me. I give up. <laughs> if he wins that round. Yeah. Some, some of the decanters, they're, they're designed so that they can hold a whole bottle in the bottom. And the reason for that is so, so you've got this nice neck and then you've got this big open space and you put the whole bottle in it and it will fill that decanter up about two thirds of the way. Mm-hmm. And that's then you've got a whole bunch of air surface on the top. And so the whole purpose of, so of the decanter there, right? is, well, it's, it's, you've got all this surface now. It's to get the, the wine to open up faster mm. than it does in the bottle. You've just got this little bitty neck. And if you've poured one glass, then you've got this much surface. Or if you've got it in a decanter, you've got like this much surface. Open up. Got it. Is that the bouquet? What yes. Smell? Bouquet Ooh. is a nice term. Right. Yes. Okay. Check Smell, odor. Whatever so there we go. It. So, and is it best, <laughs> last question about spinning it or rotating it like this, is it best to have it sitting or can you just do it in the air? If you're good, you can go like this Whoa. without spilling it. You can do it behind your back okay. if you're really good. So <laughs> yeah. like this, like this. That's okay. Right. You can do it this way too. Okay. The, most people who I'm do it on the table, it. it's because they can't do this without spilling it. And if they know that, then they'll do it on the table and right. there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, like so that. do it on the table, people, when all possible. Yeah, I, don't want, I don't want to mess up your questions here, maintain. but i got to differ with my partner here, my business partner. Oh. Okay. You on. do not want to use a decanter. I don't even want a decanter in my winery. Aerators, same thing. Okay. I was, I was enemy, enemy of wine. No good. Put it next to his glass. I, I was explaining <laughs> yeah. what a decanter is used for. Yeah. Now, I like that fresh bottle taste in my house. I don't use one. Uh, it just depends on the person, though. Okay. If it's a little funky when you first open the bottle and it tastes kind of weird, go ahead and try it. If it's an older wine, more than 8, 10 years old, yeah, go ahead using a decanter. It needs to break up a little bit. Okay. Mm-hmm. Get some oxygen in there to kind of liven it up. But if it's a fresh bottle you bought off the store, ninety percent of all wine purchased in the United States is purchased and bought and drunk within twenty four mm. hours. So you don't need to decant it. You don't need to wait. Oh, let's wait a half an hour until the guests get here so we can wait for the wine to open up. Don't do that. It's bad for the wine. It ages it really quickly. Just open your bottle and pour it. Okay. But the reason that you're doing this to get back to your question to give you a direct answer, there's two reasons. One, you want to swirl it so you can break up the volatiles in there or the what do you call it? The tannins and I say the bouquet. The bouquet, thank you. <laughs> and that's why, because then you want to stick your nose in right after you do that so you can get a good smell. Mm-hmm. That gives you the true smell of what's going on in there. If you just let it sit there and just go like this, it's Ooh. not going to break well. it up. Yeah. The right. second reason is you want to get that alcohol up on the side of the glass and wait for it to stop. Those drips coming down the glass are the, the alcohol. The legs. Because the, yes. they're called, they're called legs, good. right? Very but good. That's one of the, and these the, are areas <laughs> where I was going. But the distance where the, the, how far apart the legs are gives you an indication of how much alcohol is in The closer the legs are, the more the alcohol. But you could just ask them, hey, how much okay. alcohol is in it? You that? could, but it's more fun to guess. <laughs> okay. So you are doing part of what we do. You're looking at it too. You want to look at the color and the clarity. And, and what you're really looking for is the edge where it thins out against the glass when you hold it up. That, there's, there's that a ring, ring should be clear uh, yeah. I see to show that. it's a okay. good wine. If that ring is brown, it means it's got too much oxygen in it. It's like rusted 
iron it. Oh, is that right? It's oh, yeah. Head. So you can, yeah, that's you can what you're looking for, really, is, is that clear that ring. So do you ever, like, do that where you have, head. like, a, a, a not-so-good bottle of wine mm -hmm. with, like, a, a current good bottle and show people? So they can uh, see. We don't, we, we, we don't have any yeah, brown we, rings. Yeah, we explain that to them, but we don't have any wines with brown rings, so we can't show them. That would be yeah. very cool to like be able to show someone that. I've never heard that. You know, that well, is, that's what I, you're looking for. That shows that it's fresher. So if you see the brown, the brown. put it down. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Send it back. It's, it's corked, clear. as they call it. It's corked. Yeah, yeah it's been If you see brown, put it down. <laughs> right. it. Let's keep it going. <laughs> Keep it moving. Okay, and well, uh, one that's, of my that's true for white <laughs> wines, orange wines, red wines, rosés. Doesn't matter what color, unfiltered. Still okay. gonna have that clear. You should have that clear ring. All right, mm -hmm. even so, if you can't see through it, if it's super. Second purple. question for me, nope. which one was the the legs? But I want to go back, even though you talked about the smelling. Mm -hmm. So, I was at a winery once, mm -hmm. and the guy poured a glass because I was gonna get a glass. So he poured it in the glass, and then he did like this. It was my glass. And then he did like this. He smelled your glass? <laughs> your glass? He smelled your glass. My glass. Maybe he liked it. He you. went like this? Uh, no, not supposed and to then, do that. Did he say, here you go? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> what? He should. <laughs> Maybe I think he wanted to. He liked no, you. So, and then I was like, okay, I guess he just <laughs> made sure it was good to go. And if you I, buy a bottle of the restaurant, he brings I it went up to you, drink it. And I that's was like, your oh, job <laughs> to do all that. <laughs> Like communion, you're like, I have it never in seen that in my life. <laughs> Not supposed to, I don't know who Look, trained that guy, but I'm gonna do that. Hey, can I go work next door and do that? <laughs> Just shove my nose in there. No, I'm kidding. No, no, that's bad. Put your, <laughs> Look, your foot Look, up in there. I'll, I'll give you an example, okay? <laughs> oh my god. Sounds I'll, like something would happen to me. Let's <laughs> see what happens. We have wine. That's, ter that's terrible. <laughs> Oh I, I can't by the way, my I'm face just, straight. I'm just kidding. I'm just, I hope so. I, to <laughs> oh, I, I totally believed you. But I, I mean, could you imagine? We should do that like on Saturday Night Live. It's called What Not to Do oh, for Thanks for coming to our winery. <laughs> the okay, this is yours. Hand it to your partner. Go, here, oh taste this. Make sure, make sure it's good. Hey, for the here, you go. here you oh, go. Oh, my God. Now, as the winery owner and the guy behind the counter, I will taste a bottle every time I open it just to make sure it's good. Oh, man. That's yeah, quality but you control taste in a check. separate glass, oh. not in yeah. their glass. Right. right. Or you can just lick the bottle. I have my own. <laughs> <laughs> lick it, pour it. I bet you they do it that way. Hey, if, if that happened to you, Ron, what would you do? Like, how would you respond if you went to a winery oh, and the guy said, God. here, let me get that set up for you. <laughs> I'd say, excuse me, bring me an unopened bottle, please. Take that one back. He probably would wipe it. And I need a new glass, too. <laughs> oh, <man>. <laughs> <laughs> Grab that towel and go. Where's your towel? Like this? Right here. Yeah. Okay, so so based right on there. Ron's response, I take it that would not be proper etiquette. That would not be good. No. 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 Okay. Do not shove your nose in other people's I don't think the environmental health glasses. department would like that either. <laughs> That's right. We got to do that to someone. Oh like, hey, who would no, like a glass no. of wine? And cry. it comes. <laughs> I go, all right, here's yours. <laughs> That's the subject for the next video. <laughs> what not to do in a winery. Oh, my God. I could, you know what? We should videotape that in your winery. We should like a like spoof. have someone come for the first time. Yeah, like, and have Ron like and watch watch their faces and, watch, and, and have like, cameras catching. Well, I don't know it. if yeah, I want people to see like, that. And, and, and the, the only problem is that we'd have to grab the glass before they actually drank any because that's just bad form. <laughs> that's yeah. great. No, you just give them that towel and tell them oh to just wipe it down. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's just all good. It's all oh good. Oh my god, I like the way up. you think, but yeah, not good. Okay. <laughs> oh god, now I don't even know what I'm gonna ask. Okay, so funny. So Shoot. I got the lines, okay. I got the smelling part. Oh yeah, so the, the reason why you smell it is to get a sense of <laughs> the bouquet. And then you try to like I always think of sideways when I smell it. Because remember on sideways? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> they would, they would be like this, they go, they smell it. I feel a little bit of uh, licorice in there. <laughs> A little asparagus. Some skittles. Some skittles. Yeah, a little, little skittles. Uh, M Ms. Plain. <laughs> <laughs> As a geologist, I need to put something out. Oh. Why, and watch so Did many. Did you know A's. that the M and Ms on the printed on those candies have zinc in them? Oh. No. Or titanium is it titanium? I yeah. thought it was zinc. It makes the white which is good for no, you. No, I think it's titanium. It has the white powder to make the paint white. Okay, well oh, that's fine. We like we like white. Just powder. a little geology. <laughs> <sentiment there. laughs> Oh, All right, so, mm. so, so minerals, so minerals, minerals and minerals, and I know sideways <laughs> threw you out. So you're not the biggest fan of sideways. Uh, okay, <clears> so <throat> if you're going to bring up sideways, I have to at least tell you why I'm not the biggest okay. fan. Okay. All right. You have to remember, <laughs> we we discussed this at the beginning of the show. 
five years yeah. on, on the service side of the counter, over 30 years on the customer side. Who's when I guy? started wine tasting, wine tastings were complimentary because there was an unwritten rule between the winemaker and the customer that unless it was absolute swill, you at least bought a bottle. Sideways showed people in Los Angeles that they could drive north and for the cost of a tank of gas, get a free high. They would go up there, do a bunch of wine tasting, not buy a single bottle. The wineries were going broke. That was when they started charging for tastings. They had no choice. Mm. I don't know if they were going that's broke. That's nugget. There you go. <laughs> so that's why I don't like that movie because it ruined wine tasting for everybody. It was a, it was a good movie though. I mean, I liked it. it made me. Well, yeah, but it wasn't yeah. about wine. It was it was it was about the guys. Unintended consequences. It happened to be in the wine. Uh, region, right, mm -hmm. and and so you know people paid attention to the wrong part of that movie. <laughs> Funny movie, man. I watch it at least once a year. <laughs> uh, you're allowed. Yeah, all right. sounds good. Well, what, what questions do you have, we'll Barbara? See. Before we say goodbye to these um, amazing gentlemen. Well, it's kind of kind of a segue from your nose in the glass. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so if you go wine tasting, let's say for a novice who's never done it before, and because you know you're watching people and they're they are doing all those things like swirling, sniffing. Right. What is the like That's procedure? That's how you can tell they don't know what they're doing. Okay, so <laughs> I, let's say you just poured this, you know, in my glass, and I'm wine tasting. Like, do I just go straight and you know drink it? Like, what's oh, the no, no, procedure? No, no. I, <laughs> what do you do? Okay, what do you do? Okay, so it, look, everybody should do what makes them happy. Part of the reason you go wine tasting in California just, is to enjoy it. Just kidding. All right. Right. But for me personally, I don't swirl it. Okay. But so I will. Don't... I will smell it first. So I, you I smell wanna get, it. I want to get an idea of the wine, and then I'll taste some. Okay. And is it a sip or you just whoop, drink just, the whole thing? Just a sip. I've seen, yeah. guys, come in. Yeah, I've, I've seen guys do that, but they're doing, they're, shots. They're yeah, doing it for fun. They're now, not, they're now not some after people the spit it out too, yeah? Is that Only true? the French spit it out. Oh, okay. okay. It's a waste. Okay. Let's review, Barbara. The five S's of wine tasting. C. Mm -hmm. I, already told you, I already told you what to look for. Color, clarity. Mm -hmm. Like diamonds, right? So you do kind of look at it. So it's poured in. And you want to look for that clear ring. Kind of look for so the clear it ring. It helps. As a scientist, I want to go through all this motion okay, because so I want to know the, the full experience. And, and I'm evaluating each wine based on different steps. Okay. So every time I get a pour, I'm going to do this little routine. But okay. um, C, swirl. Mm -hmm. And that's so you can get the smell and everything. So you can we smell it. About. Okay, so. C, swirl, smell. Mm -hmm. And stick your nose in there. Sip. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sip. See, swirl, okay. see, swirl, smell, sip. If you're French, you spit. Swirl. If you're Italian, you swallow because we never throw anything away. That's right. Oh. If you're American, you can savor it. Okay. okay. That's nice. a five S's of wine tasting. Five, ace, five okay. S's. Five, okay, that's, five's that's an option. Good. Yeah. And I do have one more. Are you? One more question. All right, well, Sorry. let me, can I throw in one real quick? Oh, yes. Can't, sure. Do you ever have people to uh, gurgle? Not too often. <laughs> okay. Have you ever seen anybody do that? So Maybe either once shove or twice your nose in. in five years. That's more okay. of a, a you know a snobby wine uh, judges kind of a thing when they go. Yeah, I mean I'm serious. <laughs> I've seen people go. I well, they they that's noise. slurping. Yeah. I I have actually seen somebody gurgle, and that's rare. Okay, that's odd. You have a All sore right. throat. Well, we'll <laughs> All you're doing is forcing more air into. So it. we're we're tight on time, Barbara. So okay. you got to ask your question. Oh, you know oh, it is a generic how to pair. If, if like red or wine, like what's a generic rule of thumb to Keep pair? Keep it simple. Red with red. So red wines, red meats, mm -hmm. uh, red wines, tomato sauce, you know, I mean, dark foods, right? Mm -hmm. Light with light. White wines with fish, white wines with sushi. like uh, sushi, white wines with uh, white foods like macaron, macaroni and cheese mm -hmm. or Pasta. Ooh, things nice. like that. So okay. yeah, white with white. If you, okay. red with red. In other words, if, if you're doing chicken, a white chicken in a light spice, you're going to want to pair that with a white. Okay. Cream you're sauce, dark cream meat, pizza, chicken yeah. with lots of spices. You Alfredo. can pair that with a red. red. It's basically heavy flavors with red, light flavors with white. Got no. it. Because you don't want to overpower your food. Okay. Well, you know what they say about red wine. What do they say? <laughs> Shove your nose in it. Oh no, I'm waiting for this one. He's going. No, somewhere. I'm not going anywhere. But I just want to say, <laughs> okay, for those of you guys who live in Ventura, get over to the Panero Brothers. Uh, have have a good time. And there's a way that when they come over, they can actually there win. Will, there will be a quiz. A yes. free <laughs> glass of wine if they can guess how many corks are in that big glass. Oh, that's yes. right. We have, yes. Yes. We do. We we have a game where they can win a glass of wine. Nice. Okay. So. Any uh, last words you want to leave with everybody? Yeah. Just enjoy yourself. Bring friends. Have a good time. Learn something. Yeah. It's definitely a that's good place. And, and for me to anyone who's like 
uh, business oriented mm -hmm. or they want to meet with a co-worker mm -hmm. you know coming over to Panero Brothers is awesome it's perfect you can bring kids bring yes. your dog you know because it's, it's beautiful out. it's it's set Fun. up nicely the room is quaint I go over and do business meetings all the time mm -hmm. you can have a glass of wine these guys will like get in and they will engage with you and yeah. have a conversation or they'll very give hospitable you your space. yeah we we have the bar and if mm -hmm. you sit at the bar and you look like you know you want to have some fun we will engage you we'll ask questions we'll have fun uh we have had uh people come over and sit at the tables and look like you know they're in their own world mm -hmm. they'll have a glass of wine and want to have their own discussion mm -hmm. we leave those people alone we definitely want you to have a good time in there though and so whatever you need we're going to try and accommodate that all right. Well, I, I would also say that it'd be great to have you guys back yes. because people love learning about wine. Yeah. Uh, I expect, you know, many people to share this. Uh, and of course, we'll make available your website so mm -hmm. people can like reach out to you and learn more about you. And then for those who live in Southern California, don't come into this community or this area without stopping by and saying hi yeah, for to sure. Dave and Ron. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Because they will explain to you what's amazing about red wine that's right just go to panaro brothers.com p-a-n-a-r-o b-r-o-s or you can use the full word brothers.com you got it all right well, awesome thanks thank a lot you. thank you barbara yes, thank, thank you mr you. daniel wherever you are thank you and for those of you out there in the world <laughs> stay healthy okay Absolutely. cheers thank you cool salute salute no, salute are you doing it i drank mine already. Oh, you can drink that <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Robert Ferguson and thank you for watching our show. Now be sure to like, subscribe, and click on the bell so that you are notified whenever we upload new shows. Again, thank you for watching.